So let me show you the uh, proof for the Chernoff bound. Uh, this is a bound which is uh, tighter than the Chebyshev bound. So if you recall, oh, Chebyshev is uh, a probability of a random variable deviating uh, from its mean by some amount uh, is less than or equal to sigma x squared by uh, epsilon squared. Uh, so basically if this x happens to be um, the mean of a certain random a number of random variables then of course this uh, variance would correspond to the variance of this right and as you can see this uh, the variance of this is a sum of uh, uh, this random variable is the sum of n uh, random variables so the variance is going to depend on the cross correlation and so on so even if they are independent then of course the variance will be the sum of the variances but the whole point you can see quickly that st even then you are only using the independence of any two random variables not all of them at the same time so the Chebyshev limitation is that I hope you see that right because the ultimately in computing the variance even if the random variables were mutually independent you will get the same result they don't all have to be independent of each other but suppose they are all are independent of each other, IID, then, uh, then it is possible that we should be able to get a tighter bound and that's where the Chebyshev goes. So let me uh, make this statement here. This is true for any set of random variables. So for example, if you put this to be, let's say some delta times epsilon, which means the random variable deviating from its mean is let's say this is two percent less than two percent of the mean value then this is going to come out to be sigma x squared by uh, mu squared then one over delta squared right uh, so this is the accuracy right uh, so the penalty you pay for accuracy is in terms of uh, it's a square even even in Chebyshev let's see what is uh, Chernoff bound so he, here you have x1 through xn are uh, once again independent random variables and we will exploit the independence of all of them and these uh, at least for Chernoff these random variables are between take values between 0 and 1 all of them and let's say expected value of xi is uh, pi uh, then the statement is that if uh, x is if you take the sum x1 plus x2 plus etc xn and the expected value of x is mu then probability of x minus mu uh, greater than let's say epsilon mu is going to be less than or equal to e raised to minus epsilon squared or epsilon squared mu over 2 plus epsilon so that's for epsilon, uh, epsilon positive and uh, so this is this side right so you have the density function of x uh, so you have mu somewhere here so we are talking about essentially the random variable minus the so this is the random variable being beyond the mu epsilon so in this tail, so both are tail probabilities. The other way is 
x minus mu less than minus mu epsilon minus uh, uh, epsilon mu is also less than or equal to the, you'll get a little neater uh, looking thing epsilon mu over 2 epsilon squared mu over 2 so this is let me prove this quickly and if you want to combine them because this is a because uh, this is a looser bound we can uh, say that if you want probability of x minus mu a greater than epsilon mu is going to be uh, less than or equal to uh, the, uh, the weaker of these two e raised to minus epsilon squared over 2 plus epsilon multiplied by mu <coughs> Here. All right, so as proof, we start with the Markov identity. So, which says for any a greater than zero. Uh, for a positive random variable, probability of x greater than a is what? Uh, probability the, is the area under the density function, right? Uh, dx uh, a to infinity. So if you start with the expected value of x, so this is going to be 0 to infinity x fx x dx. This is the two-line two, two line proof. So this is certainly greater than the area, just a partial area, right? A fx x dx. And this is certainly, this is smallest value for x is a here. So this is certainly greater than a fx x dx. And if you pull a, in, a outside, then you get, so this is going to be, a multiplied by the probability of x greater than a. Uh, so we get, uh, so this is the key. In, so from here we get this result probability of x greater than a for, for any positive random variable is expected value of x over a. Right? This is for a positive random variable and a positive, of course. So we'll, we'll keep using the, the, that identity is used here. And uh, so for any random variable x greater than a, now I'm going to re remove the restriction of, in, here the x is not uh, positive, so for any x. So any random variable x, saying that x greater than a is the same as probability of, let's say, right, I can, uh, yes, for s positive, exponential is a convex function, so this is true. Now, so we can apply the, the this is the Markov uh, inequality. So here I'm going to so, so I'm going to apply this to the this uh, so this is going to be expected value of e raised to s x over e raised to s a. So this is where we basically start. Right. So I'll keep uh, using this. So this is our basic inequality. Similarly, we also want the other, if you want the other tail x less than a. Remember, no restriction, but this will be positive, this will be positive, so I can use this. This is very close to the, mo this is the moment generating function of that random variable, so we will exploit that. And this is the same as uh, probability of minus x greater than minus a, right, multiplying by minus on both the sides. 
So then if you do the e to the power, then it reads and this is going to be greater than expected value of again using the Markov identity. Alright, so we'll use uh, these two identities. So I'm sort of going to quickly I think most of you have looked at it. All right, so these are the expressions two and three, which is what we want. I'll so I'll prove uh, uh, each side uh, quickly. And then I think, you know, the inequality some of you proved will be useful here and you'll see where it comes up. So once again, x is, uh, you have x1, x2, etc. Uh, you have the random variables xi and I'm going to define x, x to be x1 plus x2, etc. xn. And uh, so this is the uh, sum of the uh, sum of the uh, random variables. Now in this case, I'm going to assume that probability of uh, x i is, is a two valued, like in voting, it's only a two valued, right? So it's going to be p i or p, and the probability of x i equal to c q. Here you can do 1 minus pi. And all the i's can be equal. So from here, we go, all we need is the expected value, expected value of x is. So if you want the average, you divide by a constant. That's not a big deal. So from here, it's the sum of the expected values of xi. And that's going to be sigma pi. And I'm simply going to call this mu. So once again, if all the pi's are equal to p, this will be np. And if you if you take the average, the n goes away. So that you get right. Uh, so let's start with this probability of x greater than uh, one plus epsilon times mu. Right. This is the same as uh, this expression, right? probability of x minus mu, this one, probability of x minus mu a greater than uh, mu epsilon. So now I can use, uh, see, this uh, number from 2, right? Probability of x greater than a, using Markov, I can, so instead of uh, yes, I'm going to put this, uh, this value, I mean instead of a. A is going to be 1 plus mu multiplied by epsilon, 1 plus epsilon multiplied by mu. So this is going to be E raised to, uh, copying from there, copying from here, E raised to minus S multiplied by 1 plus epsilon mu e to the power Sx. X is going to be sigma xi, i equal to 1 through n. And so this is the key step which is which was missing in Chebyshev. See here, if all these random variables are independent, what is this characteristic function? Anyone? This becomes what? This will be e raised to s x1 multiplied by e raised to s x2, etc. Everything within the expectation. If the random variables are independent, uh, this will reduce to uh, what? Reduce to one. No, I mean, remember this. You can this exponent. This becomes. Remember, this is of course x1 plus x2, etc. So this is e raised to s x1, e raised to s x2, etc. E raised to s x n. And if the random variables are independent, what happens to this? Huh? It's a product. So this is where we use the independence. 
so we are exploiting the independence. This step was missing in the Chebyshev. That's the whole point of the Chernov coming in. Chebyshev never, uh, in the Chebyshev, we, we never had an opportunity to use the independence of all of them. At the most, only pairwise independence. Uh, the, when you have a sum like this, uh, here you can exploit the uh, independence. So if these are all independent, then we can write this as the product, right? So then we can write this as product i equal to 1 through n e raised to s x i. Now look at this, e raised to x i is, x i only takes to, so this is, this is why it's mostly good for uh, random variables which are yes or no type, so polling is ideal or sampling etc. So x i only takes two values, so it's the, uh, so one with uh, somewhere here, right, one with the probability p i, so p i multiplied by e raised to s 1. Uh, plus 1 minus pi multiplied by e raised to 0 essentially. So this is p pi e to the power s minus uh, or plus qi, right? Or 1 minus pi, let me write this as 1 minus pi. So we can uh, write this as 1 plus pi into e raised to s minus 1, right? 1 pi e raised to s minus 1. And uh, uh, this is always true. So remember, pi is positive. If s is positive, this is positive. So I'm going to use this inequality. If x is positive, this is true. So if that is the case, remember, because if you expand this, the, this is only just the first two terms, 1 plus x plus x squared by 2, etc., etc. So here, this is going to be less than or equal to e to the power pi e raised to s minus 1. So look here, there is a, we need the e because this is a product. So if I, product, if I take a product here, I'll just write it here product i equal to 1 through n is on this. So then this will become a product, so I'm going to put it here, i equal to 1 through n on this term. Then this will become a product here, and this will become a product i equal to 1 through n. And this product here, this is going to be a summation, i equal to 1 through n. But sigma pi is mu i, mu. So we get this quantity, we got an, a value for this. This quantity is, I will write down here, but let me just write it down so that you get uh, this quantity is, uh, all right, so I already made a, I'll write down here, that quantity is less than or equal to e raised to mu, e raised to s minus one. You notice that I missed one term here? We have, I only put the numerator, we also have this e raised to minus s a. Yeah, it is here, but by the time I came here, I forgot. e raised to minus s multiplied by one plus epsilon multiplied by mu. So e raised to minus s, 1 plus epsilon multiplied by mu. So let me put everything together. So this expression is less than this. So probability of x greater than 1 plus epsilon multiplied by mu is less than e raised to s, 1 plus epsilon mu e raised to, right? <coughs> from here, right? 
this is mu. So so you notice that I can pull the mu outside. There's a minus sign here. So this becomes e raised to So let's say I pull out minus mu then I have minus s plus 1 plus epsilon uh, or s So I'm pulling um, mu outside with a minus sign so this is s multiplied by 1 plus epsilon minus e raised to s minus 1 right. all right so this is good for this is the key idea here this is good for any s and uh, so to find the We want to find the maximum so that you can get the uh, the best bound, right? So we take this one and integrate, uh, differentiate with respect to uh, S. So you have 1 multiplied by... So this is the function. Let me call this to be A of S. So it's a derivative. So derivative with respect to S gives us uh, 1 plus epsilon minus E raised to S, right? So essentially this gives us E raised to S equal to 1 plus epsilon or S equal to log of uh, 1 plus epsilon, natural log, right? So I'm going to substitute that here. So let me from here. So then we need to simply simplify and see whether we can get into this expression, that's all. And that's where that uh, inequality that came in that you did will turn out to be useful, right? So let's, uh, I'll write it there, but let me just uh, put it here. So if you put S equal to, uh, S equal to log of 1 plus epsilon, so that will be here, this is 1. And you see E raised to S is 1 plus epsilon, minus 1, this will be, this whole thing will become epsilon, you see that, right? E raised to S is 1 plus epsilon, E raised to S minus 1, so this becomes minus epsilon. So notice that this becomes minus mu. Uh, uh, 1 plus epsilon log 1 plus epsilon minus mu, right? So probability of x greater than 1 plus epsilon multiplied by mu is less than or equal to yes this uh, this uh, less than or equal to sign coming from here where we have used uh, this identity okay so that's good and uh, so this is where now you can see what i was so last time then i'm going to give you a expression So this takes some doing, but let's start with, uh, so this is what we want to prove. Now we want to prove, notice that this is F 1 plus epsilon, but I'm going to start with 1 plus epsilon by 2. Reason why, you will see in a second. So first the claim is that this is true for all epsilon positive. So the way to prove that you bring it to the other side and uh, define uh, B of epsilon to be 1 plus epsilon by 2 log of, and this is what I gave you as a homework last time. 
So then the proof was as, so first of all you notice that B0 is what? So 0, this is 0, that's 1, log 1 is 0, so B0 is 0. So let's take its derivative with respect to epsilon. So that's going to be 1 plus epsilon by 2 over 1 plus epsilon, right? Plus half log 1 plus epsilon minus 1. And if you evaluate that at the origin, uh, so notice that this is 1, right? Because epsilon equal to 0. And this is 0, so 1 minus 1, so that's also 0. So let's go to the second derivative. I think you all saw the proof. So that's going to be the derivative of this, which is v du, right? So that's uh, minus u dv over 1 plus epsilon the whole squared. Plus the derivative of this, which is 1 over 2 multiplied by 1 plus epsilon uh, minus 0. So this, if you simplify epsilon by 2 goes away, you get 1 you get half minus 1, so minus half. So first term is minus uh, half 1 plus epsilon squared uh, plus half uh, 1 plus epsilon, right? So this if you simplify, so this is 1 plus epsilon minus 1, I mean, right? Here, here 1 plus epsilon, here minus 1, so you get epsilon. So this is positive, the key is this is positive for all positive. So second derivative is positive. So th this slope is going to increase, right? For Because it's starting from origin. And if the slope increases, the curve will increase. So you know that this is B is something like this. That's all I wanted to prove. That means this term is greater than this term. Any questions? All right, so that was, that you can see why that is re relevant now. <laughs> Any issues? This is for all positive values. Yeah, I mean, uh, you can do it, uh, you can break it down, epsilon from 0 to 1, use the logarithmic expansion, etc. But this uh, actually proves in one step. So what we have is, if this is true, this is of course true. So I can write log of uh, 1 plus epsilon is greater than epsilon over 1 plus epsilon by 2. For all epsilon positive, right? by bringing this term here and now I am going to multiply by 1 plus epsilon so I will multiply by 1 plus epsilon here alright so we are very close to see I got this much now I am going to subtract uh, epsilon from here so I am going to subtract epsilon here so I will subtract epsilon here so what do I get? I have 1 over 1 plus epsilon by 2. Here I have epsilon plus epsilon squared minus epsilon. I'm going to mul multiply it by 1 plus epsilon by 2. So epsilon cancels, epsilon squared by 2 cancels. So you have epsilon squared by 2 over 1 plus epsilon by 2. So we are almost done. All I have to do is so this is, so if I multiply by minus mu, you can see the whole, the inequality will flip, right? So this is a positive quantity. Minus of this is going to be less than that. So this is going to be less than or equal to e raised to minus mu. So this is, of course, this is the same as epsilon squared over 2 plus epsilon right? so if I substitute that
All right, so that's what this, so this result is true for all epsilon positive. So we proved the first half for the positive side. So x minus, so this is the same as, look here, this is the same as x minus mu beyond epsilon mu. So if x is somewhere here, this will be x, uh, uh, x minus mu will be So if x is somewhere here, you bring it to here, x minus mu. You want that to be within, uh, eps within uh, epsilon mu of that, uh, epsilon mu of uh, that exceeding by epsilon mu. That's the probability. You want this quantity, you want the, ra the random variable close to the mean. So the, prob the question being asked is, what is the probability that this difference, this error, exceeds 2% of the mean, whatever. Epsilon is that uh, 0.02 or something. So here, you can call this whole thing to be delta if you want, x minus. So this is the same as probability of x minus mu exceeding by mu epsilon. So now let me prove the other side. So we had probability of x less than a is uh, less than or equal to, you had that, look at your equation 3. So that's where I'm going to start from. e raised to minus sx over e raised to minus sa. Any questions? So again, I'll go a little faster here. So e raised to minus uh, sx is same as expected value of e to the power minus s sigma xi. So I'm going to use all the independence of all these random variables. If I do that, this will become the product of expected value of e raised to sxi. And the earlier product is i equal to 1 through n. So he here to here, I have used the independence of all random variables. This is something we never used in the Chebyshev. That's the, that's the key. So we are able to, because if you are told that the random variables are independent, if you don't use it, then what's the point? It's same as uh, independence has not been exploited. So here we have it. All right, so this as before is, remember, what is this? It takes the value 1 with the probability pi. So this is pi e raised to s. Uh, plus uh, it takes the value 0 with probability 1 minus pi. So this is uh, 1 plus pi into, uh, it was e raised to minus sx, so right. E, so there is a minus sign here, e raised to minus s minus 1. So this again, as before, this is less than or equal to pi e raised to minus s minus 1. And when you substitute this here, this is less than or equal to, remember the product becomes summation, so e raised to sigma pi, which is mu i, e raised to minus s minus 1. So this is e raised to mu, e raised to minus s minus 1. So let me substitute it here, I'll write down below here. So probability of x less than or equal to a, is less than or equal to 
e raised to s a then you have then I just take this expression and uh, so this is, you can I can write it here e raised to s a then uh, this quantity uh, plus mu e raised to minus s minus 1 so before I proceed let me make this a to be what we want 1 minus mu uh, 1 minus epsilon del uh, mu So probability of x minus mu plus than minus epsilon mu, mu. In other words, with it's being in a that's the same as probability of x less than one minus epsilon multiplied by mu. So this is our a, right? So in this expression, instead of a, I'm going to put. So this is less than or equal to e raised to s 1 minus epsilon multiplied by mu so mu is common plus mu e raised to minus s minus 1 so let me pull the mu outside Again, this is true for any s, so we will uh, take the derivative of that expression and uh, and see what is the optimum value of s. We call this to be B of S, right? I mean B of epsilon. S multiplied by 1 minus epsilon plus E raised to minus S minus 1, right? So I'm going to take its derivative and substitute it to 0. So that's going to be 1 minus epsilon minus E raised to minus S equal to 0. So e raised to minus s is 1 minus epsilon, right? So s is uh, minus log of 1 minus epsilon, right? That's the right answer. So it's a minimum value here. So this expression reduces to, let's see here, S is minus, uh, so one minus log, one minus epsilon log, one minus epsilon. E raised to minus S is here. E raised to minus S is one minus epsilon. So this becomes uh, plus one minus epsilon minus one, right? So that's just minus one. I hope, I hope you see this. So you can see that this expression now reduces to e raised to minus mu. So I am pulling out the minus outside and I will bring epsilon plus 1 minus epsilon multiplied. So you can either leave it like this or try to get a simplification. 1 minus epsilon, not 1 plus. Everything is 1 minus epsilon. So this is... Uh, Essentially, we can leave it here for epsilon positive. But if you want to get a closer, a nicer expression, in this case, it so happens that it is not true for all epsilon. If epsilon is between 0 and 1, you can, uh, you can do a Taylor expansion of this, right? Taylor expansion is what? Value of the function at... Uh, so they take this to be x naught. So uh, the value of the function at 1 is 0. So I don't know whether you must remember this or you can do it yourself. <coughs> so it has got uh, this interesting expansion.
but this is only good for 0 to 1. I mean, you have a similar expansion for a epsilon positive 2, but we didn't need it because we were able... You can't do the derivative and show here anything, so this is the best you can do with the minus sign here, right? Again, I showed you how to get this. Uh, expand this uh, uh, Taylor series around 1. So first the value of the function at 1, 0. The derivative of this is what? Minus 1 over 1 minus epsilon. Evaluate it at 0, that's minus 1. So that's how you get. So the first term is going to be minus, I mean the derivative divided by 1 factorial multiplied by x. Remember it goes plus x squared plus the second derivative and so on. So second derivative will be positive. Again, uh, it will turn out to be <coughs> negative uh, 1 over 2, evaluated at, the, at 1. Evaluate, right, so, so this is easy, so where are we? So we, j we have this one. So let me multiply this by 1 minus epsilon multiplied by log of 1 minus epsilon. So the, first of all, it's the same series, right? So minus epsilon plus epsilon squared by 2, epsilon cubed by 3 plus epsilon 4 by 4, etc. Then I multiply by minus epsilon this whole thing. So that's going to become, the first term is going to be, remember this is, uh, uh, this is minus, 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 plus. So this is going to be plus epsilon squared by epsilon squared, right, uh, from here. Epsilon will hit this, so that will give you epsilon squared. Then you will have uh, epsilon cubed by 2, etc. And then of course if you, in our case, you also had a, a plus epsilon here. So if you add a plus epsilon here, this epsilon and this epsilon will cancel. So here you have minus epsilon squared by 2, here you have epsilon squared by 2. So you can see the term is going to be, the first term is going to be epsilon squared by 2. Then epsilon, then we see epsilon, this will be, this is plus, this is minus, so that's going to be epsilon squared by 6, x, uh, epsilon cubed by 6, etc. And all positive terms, because this term is higher than this. So I can say this is less than or equal to, or this is, this is, uh, this term is greater than epsilon squared by 2. I'm only using the first term. So we are almost there. So now if you, because of this minus sign, so you can say this is less than or equal to e raised to minus uh, mu epsilon squared by 2. But this result is good for <coughs> epsilon between 0 and 1. So we are done with the proof. I proved both the sides. So let me just uh, summarize it here. So one side we already have here. <coughs> so this is e raised to minus mu epsilon squared over 2 plus epsilon. But this is true for all positive epsilon. And the other side is x being less than 1 minus epsilon multiplied by mu is also less than or equal to e to the power minus mu epsilon squared over 2 for epsilon between 0 and 1. So if you want to combine, of course, uh, this, this is a sloppier bound. So you can, if you want to replace here this by 2 plus epsilon, this is still true. So if you want, you can combine these two as like this.
So both the sides, uh, this is true. So that will be 2 times e raised to minus mu. If you really want to get rid of the epsilon, then you write it like this. You just bring in the next integer, right? 3 is certainly, if epsilon is between, remember this result, this result is now suddenly only good for epsilon between 0 and 1. Because the result, this result is good for 0 and 1. This is certainly true for 0 and 1. So the combined result is good for 0 and 1. If this is between 0 and 1, 2 plus epsilon is <coughs> less than 3. So then you flip it and then with a the minus sign, this inequality is true. So you can, if you want a simpler result, this is true. We can stick with this also. So it's an application to polling. Again, let me quickly show you. So the key to remember here, the, you, this is uh, you have to stay, stat, uh, these random variables are between 0 and 1 and all these random variables are independent identically distributed with the expected value of xi equal to pi and sigma pi is what we are calling to be and here uh, in all this x is x1 plus x2 etc etc. And uh, as you can see, we, d we have we made use of the fact that this xi is only take two values. So you should remember, because expected value of xi was uh, uh, <coughs> pi means 1 multiplied by pi plus 0 multiplied by 1 minus pi. So if I define <coughs> x bar as x1 plus x2, etc., xn over n, and if expected value of each xi is p, then of course this is p, right? x bar is p. So probably the original thing is probability of x greater than Instead of x, if you substitute, uh, instead of, if you substitute x bar, then its mean is. Uh, remember, if this is this random variable, then this mean should be. It's uh, <coughs> so this means the expected value of x bar is p. That's what. I mean. So we should use the uh, th this statement now. So this is less than or equal to 2 times e to the power minus mu epsilon squared over 2 plus delta. So this is what we are going to use instead for x bar. So x bar minus p a greater than epsilon p is going to be less than or equal to 2 times e raised to minus uh, So this is the same as x bar is what uh, uh, sigma xi over n minus p a greater than, so I just substituted for x bar, uh, this is epsilon p and if I multiply it by n this is the same as probability of sigma xi 
minus NP A greater than epsilon NP. All right, fine. So this is for this random variable, this is the mean NP. So this is going to be less than or equal to according to this bound here. So this mu is going to be for us NP and everything else is the same, that's all. So this is going to be e to the power minus NP epsilon squared over 2 plus epsilon. And you can say, so remember, so this is the average of the poles. This is the sum of the poles, etc. So this epsilon you could take saying that, remember this, this value is unknown. That's the whole point of doing the polling. You don't know what the actual P is for that population. So we find the, this is the approximate or the estimated P, right? This is the estimated mean, you can see here. We want this estimated mean to be close to the unknown. This is unknown, this is known. After polling, once you do the uh, sample the population or do the polling, uh, then the this is unknown, this is unknown. But nevertheless, we want the known quantity to be close to the unknown within this error. So it is up to us to, so you say, let's say I want within two percentage of the unknown value. This is up to us to decide or one, one percentage. And then you can say that and you, if you want, you can call this to be, this whole thing to be your confidence level. Again, you can select a num number. You can say 5% confidence or 1% confidence, etc. So let me call this whole thing to be, uh, uh, we want this to be, <laughs> let be uh, some number eta, this is your confidence number. So of course, the, yeah, this is, uh, you can see, this is going to be a probability, so this is a, after all it's a probability, so it's going to be uh, between, uh, uh, the, well, by 5% I meant a 0 0.05, right, between 0 and 1. So the question always in polling is, uh, Question is, or what should be and how many people should you poll so that error is uh, whatever less than two percent here epsilon with the confidence uh, with one percent confidence whatever so that it so we can specify these two numbers. This we can specify as two percent. And this you can specify whatever, let's say 5%, yeah, just a different number, or 1%. So let's see, then we can solve for, so let me equate this to, we want this to be less than or equal to eta. So we, we have uh, e raised to minus n p epsilon squared over 2 plus epsilon less than or equal to, there was a eta, so 2 over eta. Let me take the logarithm and uh, flip it. Or take the minus to the other side, right? So that means log, flip it, right? Log of 2 over eta and greater than bring it to the other side, so NP squared over which has 2 plus epsilon is greater than or equal to what? 2 over eta, then let me take the logarithm, so I get this. Now I can solve for uh, N, right? So N is going to be greater than or equal to uh, P over 2 plus epsilon over p 
then you have 1 over epsilon squared log of uh, 2 over epsilon. So this is the answer. So whatever, if you are polling something, obviously you have some idea. You can take it to be 0.5 or 0.48, whatever. And uh, 2 plus epsilon is roughly the same as 2. So that doesn't, uh, is no, so you could say n should be greater than So, but the key is here. If you decide this number to be 2, as I said last time, uh, the, the, pen, the uh, penalty penalty or the cost is in terms of polling. The cost, cost is going to be proportional to 1 over square of the error. Whatever accuracy you need, the penalty is going to be 1 over the square of that. So, if this is 0 0.02, this is going to be what? What is the factor? Uh, 10,000 over 4, 2,500, right? So this is 2500, whereas the confidence is going to appear through log of 2 over eta. So if this number is, uh, let's say, 2% uh, here also, so then this is going to be 2 over 0 0.02. So 2, 2 cancel, that's uh, 1 over 0 0.01, that's 100. Log 100 is what, about 7 or 8, something like that. So 7 multiplied by 2500, that's about... Uh, how much is it? 15,000, 18,000. Uh, and then this you have to sort of approximate. So this, uh, the numerator I'm going to take it to be P, I mean uh, to be uh, 2. And uh, P is, uh, it doesn't matter the accuracy. So you can take 0.45 or 0.4 or po uh, 0.5. So that's going to, again, cause a factor of, uh, or even if you take it to be 1, that's just still there will be this two factor. So whatever is the, this number is going to be multiplied by two. So that's the number of people you need to poll to get this accuracy and that approximation. Epsilon approximation, the result need to be within uh, epsilon uh, neighborhood of mu uh, with uh, so much confidence, 1%, 2%, 5%, whatever. And uh, so the key is here, we have exploited the independence of all these random variables.